We are going to talk about ATC cards today and the difference between those and pocket letters. Um, what are the similarities? How do you make them? How do you go about swapping them? These are three ATC cards that I worked on. Now, ATC cards are artist trading cards, and these were originally created by a Swiss artist in 1997 as a part of a collaborative for artists to share their artwork. And they would literally paint, draw, sketch, whatever their art form, their medium was on these cards, and they would trade them. And there would be information about the work on the back of it, you know, the title of the work and the date. And it was just a way for artists to connect. You know, it's really grown and blossomed into the crafting community and it's become um, a broader kind of a broader thing um, so there's really no hard fast rules about them the only thing that is steadfast is the size so typically artist trading cards are two and a half wide by three and a half tall that does not mean you cannot do a artist trading card in a portrait, I mean, I'm just landscape position, but generally they are done in a portrait position. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, so as long as the dimensions are two and a half by three and a half, you really can do them in any direction. I'm sorry, I'm losing my camera here. There we go. Two and a half by three and a half. And I usually just cut up a bunch and keep them ready for myself whenever I'm going to make some and I'll explain to you how I go about making artist trading cards and I'd love to hear your thoughts about how you do them as well. So you see I have three different examples here. When I think about artist trading cards because they're so flat typically they're not those big chunky types of embellishments that you normally see or you know that you often see I tend to think about a lot of mixed media. So typically people will, you know, do all different kinds of things with mixed media. They'll do paper piecing, they might do stamping, they might paint on them, use their inks, draw, color. You can literally do anything. You can cover them with fabric. You can um, add images to them and color those. Anything you can think of you can do on an artist trading card. For visual interest, um, a lot of times it is the mixed media. So for this one in particular, and I am not great with mixed media, this is something I am learning every day and it takes a lot of practice and it takes um, some freedom just to be able to trust yourself to do it. But for this one, I did it very simply. And what I did was I just cut out my three by three and a half by two and a half card and I took a piece of ephemera that I had from a packet and I put it on top, placed it where I wanted it to be, and then I just cut around it. So this one happens to be the Leaning Tower of Pisa underneath. Then I took other pieces of ephemera and added those to the top of it. And I used a gem. I don't want them to be too thick because these can potentially translate to pocket letters. If they're not going to, that's fine. Make it as thick as you want, but typically they can translate to a pocket letter, so I just wanted to explain that. And, you know, just visual interest, I took some of the um, ink that I have and just inked up the edges so that it's a little bit distressed around the, around the sides. Very simple, very easy to do. This one, I took some of my uh, dye inks, which I am learning to use, and took a little sponge and just did three different colors of pink. I didn't blend them very well, as you can see, but that's okay. It's art, it's creative, um, and it's, you know, just whatever you want it to be. Then I also took a stamp, did some butterflies. I added some stickles just for some sparkle. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera. And then Nouveau Drops I added around here, and I put a little sentiment. This one I did the other day, um, this is actually for a swap, and this all I did was took pieces of paper that coordinated and I ripped them so you can see the paper tearing here 
And then I added a little piece of ephemera in the corner. Again, some Nouveau drops, those are my favorite things. I cut out a little butterfly punch and added that to it as well. So again, anything you want it to be. It could simply be a piece of ephemera that you taped on top. It could be, like I said, take this, color it in, doodle on it, whatever you want the artist trading card to look like. That's, that's all there really is to it. That's as simple as it gets for artist trading cards. It's a really fun opportunity to pull out all your types of media, your paints, your sprays, your distress oxides, all of those things, and make little teeny works of art for yourself. It's also a great opportunity if you're thinking about doing a really big project to try it out on a little piece of art and see how you like it. Now, when we swap trading cards, we're not usually naming the artwork and, and dating it, but we are typically sometimes uh, typically putting um, information on the back about us. And a lot of times when you do a trading card swap, people will ask you for that information. They'll ask you for information such as your name, maybe your home address so they can mail you things. You might put on some of your crafty likes and dislikes. You might put on colors that you love, um, your crafting style, maybe some hobbies. And it's a really nice and wonderful way for the recipient to reference your interests if they're going to send you something in the future. So that's what I particularly like about the trading cards. I love having them, having a little piece of artwork from somebody and also um, knowing a little bit about them. So it's a wonderful uh, way to do that. Um, another thing I just wanted to mention out of interest is that ATC cards are the exact same size as, you know, those baseball trading cards and things like that that you have seen. And they're the size of traditional playing cards too. So I have seen people take actual playing cards and decorate those as well and use them as their ATCs or pocket letters. Wendy Kidd says, I like to keep a bunch on hand and whenever I'm using a technique, I'll do a background on an ATC and set it aside to complete later. I also have a bowl of quote unquote stuff on my desk. I'll throw in extra. And Sandra says she has not tried lunar paste. Okay. Well, maybe we'll have to do a comparison or, or something like that. But Wendy says the extra stuff is punched pieces, stickers, etc., to use on the ATCs. Wendy, I think that's a wonderful idea. Trying out the new mediums, if you wanted to, for example, I haven't tried distress oxides yet, and I really want to do that. And this is a great opportunity on something so small to experiment with making backgrounds. And when Wendy is talking about backgrounds, she's talking about that initial layer, initial layer that you add on to to add interest to your card. So in this particular one, it would be my um, rose of ink here. On this one, it would be that one piece of ephemera. On this, it would be the three original pieces that covered the card and created the, the teared um, background. So it's great to have those backgrounds around. And like she was saying, she keeps a lot of her ephemera stickers, things like that handy. And I will tell you when you're in a crafting rut, this is a really great thing to do. Just create some backgrounds. They can be messy, they can be refined, they can be anything you want them to be and start playing around with your different mediums. And it's amazing what kind of creativity it sparks. Okay, now, as I was saying before with the ATC cards, Typically, they are done in the portrait direction. They can be done in the landscape direction. There are no rules or rhymes to it. You do what you feel. Pocket letters are basically ATC cards. And you get these little, I'm going to show you the back because I don't want to show you my pocket letters yet. These baseball card or these trading card can, uh, what do you call these things? Sleeves. And you can just take your ATC cards and put them in and share them in pockets like this. And that's why they're called pocket letters. Now, pocket letters came about in 2015. Um, there was a crafter, her name was Jeanette Lane, and she invented this whole technique. And um, it is, you know, just blossomed since then. And again, it's become anything you really want it to be. 
The one thing it originally did include, which I think is different than the way we see them now, are um, letters. So there would be, this would be a way to communicate with a pen pal, for example. You would put different things in the pockets. Mm -hmm. So it would be maybe, it could be an ATC card, but hers didn't necessarily start with that. They did include things like letters and stickers and ephemera. And she actually had a chart that she made up back in 2015, which I want to show you. And this was her suggestion for things that you should include in a pocket letter. And again, like I said, this has changed a lot over the years. But so for the first example, um, she would have you put in a letter and that would just be a letter to your pen pal telling them about yourself and your crafting experiences. Then maybe adding a piece of ephemera. She suggested adding stickers, tags, maybe a quote an about me section, miscellaneous, a pocket letter explanation, which was something that she would give you. You could download from her site, but we all kind of know what the pocket letter is now. Maybe a, a tea bag or something like that. So um, this was the way they originally started. And what they were meant to do was allow you just to send some flat mail. So you could take your pocket letter and just fold it up and it fits very nicely like flat mail inside a size 10 envelope. And that would be the way you would um, share your, share it with your pen pal. I think pocket letters have evolved a lot more. And like I said, your ATCs can very easily be put in the, in the sleeves to create your pocket letters. But my approach is a little bit different. Again, not the right way, not the wrong way, just my approach. Because my mind thinks this way, I tend to do things um, thematically. I like things to look a certain way. So when I do a pocket letter, again, I could have put my ATC cards in there. But when I do a pocket letter, I like to use a single piece of paper that is just a beautiful background and I will put my sleeves over that piece of paper and decide where to cut. And when I say a piece of paper, I mean, you know when you go through your 12 by 12 pads and they have, for, here's, for example, here's the page that I used. And I probably wouldn't use this for crafting, uh, for making something small, maybe a Memdex card or something like that. But because the images are so big, I might not use it for some of the other crafting that I do. So I don't always know what to do with these really big pieces. Or something like this, for example. When you get um, just your image in the corner and it's beautiful and you have some you know, written words here, how do you use that? Because if you're going to cut your paper up, maybe you're only going to get you know, just this brown flower here, or you might get just some words. So these are the kinds of pages that I struggle with for crafting, but I love to use for pocket letters. All I do at that point is I take my pocket letter and I put it over the paper and decide where I want to make cuts. And I honestly just love the way it looks. I think it's elegant. I think it's just pretty and it gives a beautiful background and even without a lot of decoration, I think it's still such a beautiful thing to look at. Now, I recently did a poll on Instagram and I asked people, and I'm gonna ask you here if you would put your answer in the comments, do you decorate the individual cards? Do you decorate the outside of the sleeves? Or do you decorate both? Now, originally pocket letters were different. Like I said, she would have you maybe just put little gifts in and little notes. Um, they have now emerged to things like these little ATC size cards and a lot of people put their little treat in the back. They put things like some um, em embellishments or cut aparts or sequins mixes or you could put a little tea bag or a little gift of some sort and they tend to get very chunky and we're not typically sending them folded up anymore like flat mail. But um, 
they're just a fun way to get creative and have a lot of fun. And I think you have a question. No, I was just going to let you know that from the comments that Kawhi says, I've actually never made a pocket letter before. Oh, okay. And Wendy Kidd says she's done both. Um, and uh, Photography Makes says uh, all of the above, LOL. I also make shaker pockets. And Ziomara says I do both decorate the card and the outside. I tend to decorate both too. And um, I'm sorry, was it Wendy who said she makes shaker pockets? Um, Wendy says she does both, both. and um, Photography. Okay. Makes, Sh she does shaker shaker pockets. pockets are a lot of fun too. And if you're not familiar with those, you would typically add a shaker mix to one of the pockets. Now you can have the pocket card in there, the little piece of paper. I'm just going to call them pocket cards if that's okay with everybody. You could have the card in there or you don't even have to have the card in there and you fill it with the shaker mix and you seal it and it adds a cute little um, pocket there full of fun sequins mix and you can, you know, obviously shake it. Trice's Crafty Luck says, I do both. Perfect. Uh, yeah, you know, it's anything you want it to be. It really is. Now, on this particular one that I made, I don't know that it calls for a lot of embellishment, but, you know, let's take a look and see what we can do to kind of just give it some extra oomph. So, and, and where do you want to do that? So, for example, on this one, this has a lot going on. And it's so pretty that I don't know that I necessarily want to add something to this one. I don't think I want to add any bells or whistles, but maybe I do want to take this little, you know, Wink of Stella pen, which is just basically glitter. And maybe I just want to color in, get make sure that's going, and add some glitter to the inside of my flower. So there, I just colored that in, and I'm not sure if it's picking up on camera. Again, this is called Wink of Stella, and it's a like a glitter. And that's all I did was just added, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can add a little glitter just to this particular card because what does it really need? It's such a pretty card. But then, you know, going through the other ones, maybe I want to add a sentiment, for example. So I'm going to go through some of my sentiments. I'm going to, you know, just pull out some of my ephemera here. I'm going to dump it all out and have fun with it. And again, this is the one I got at Hobby Lobby. It's Paper Studio. There's 50 pieces, um, 100 pieces, I'm sorry, two of each. Wait for the 40% off coupon. These are a must. And now I can decide, do I want to add this to the outside of my pocket letter or do I want to add it to the inside? Do I want to add it to the card? And there's no reason I can't do both. You do whatever feels right. Um, you know, I pulled out this little piece called You Are Lovely, just a little piece of ephemera here, and I'm trying to decide where I want to add it. Do I want to add it to this bottom part of the card here? Do I want to put it inside? And I think it looks really, you know, pretty and simple just at the bottom. Because this is a glossy finish, because this is... I'm going to grab a larger tape. Because this is the outside of the pocket, I typically tend to use double-sided tape the glue doesn't tend to work as well. So I'm just going to take some double-sided tape and I'm going to add it to the back of my, I'm doing the added it to the back of my ephemera here. Now you can also cover the spine here. A lot of people take these and they put them in binders so that they can collect pocket letters. The only Thing you may want to ask them is if they want the whole three holes available so that they can go ahead and add it to a binder. So I just added a little bit of a piece of ephemera there and it just gives it a little lovely sentiment. I don't really think it needs a lot um, but maybe you know we take a look and there are stickers like I said use your stickers, use your use ribbons, use ephemera and you know, this is really pretty. This says bloom. I don't know. See, if I do it on one of these, that's the problem with using, you know, these beautiful images. You don't want it to cover up anything. So we're going to look for some of the smaller ones. Let your soul shine. Maybe I want to use something like that and put it. I'm not sure I like it there. And you just go and play and look where it looks best. 
and like I said, decorate the inside, decorate the outside, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna keep pulling pieces apart until I decide what I wanna do. Here we go, here's some shaker mix that I, whoops, that I had already made up, which coordinates perfectly. So let's do it, Poochie. I can't promise you this is gonna be beautiful or come out well, but we're gonna give it a try. So all I'm gonna do is simply dump. So I just added some shaker mix in here, and this was just shaker mix that I had made up because I'm working on a project right now. Now, you know what? I made a mistake. For me, this may not be a mistake for you, but I just added this shaker mix to a, to a pocket that already has a word or sentiment over the plastic. So I don't like that. And I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna add it to a different pocket instead because I feel like I lose a lot of the sequins because the sentiment is there. So let's see if I can get this out without making a mess. And if there's a piece or two left in, that's not a big deal. Okay, I'm gonna add it to this first pocket because I just think this is really pretty. Or should we add it to the middle? I'm gonna add it to the middle. Create some visual interest here. I wanna put the card down and make sure that that's secure so that it's not just the, thank you. I'm not just sealing the plastic to the plastic. I'm sealing the plastic to the card. I just think it gets a, I get a better seal that way. Now that my sequence is in, I'm gonna take, and I can even slide this out just a bit. Oh no, I can't, because I already stuck it down. Um, I'm gonna take some more double-sided tape here. Make a little. And again, I'm just making sure that tape is down there good. I'm gonna get my little score tool here. And then I'm gonna make sure that's down there really good. Okay. And there we go. It's upside down. My shaker's in there. It's not leaking. It's not leaking. So we have success. So Poochie, thank you for the um, suggestion. I was kind of afraid to just <laughs> go ahead and give it a, a, a test online um, while I'm live here, but it worked out well. And see what beautiful interest that adds. So again, you can decorate inside the pocket, you can decorate outside the pocket. You can add fun gifts in the back. You can not do a card at all and just put a gift in. You can do whatever you want. And that is my biggest takeaway from today. I, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but I was a little bit chastised, chastised when I made a twinchy. And um, that's just a two by two square that you decorate. And I decided to make a circle, a circular twinchy, and um, I was told that I shouldn't be doing that because twinchies are not circular. So um, my takeaway from today is who cares? And you do you, <laughs> and if you want to do your pocket this way and make everything landscape, do it. If you want to, you know, just put ATC cards and do all different kinds of mixed media, do it. Do whatever is your creative expression. That's where art comes from and that's what makes it so fun. Now this, I see, I, very, I tend to be very tonal, tone on tone crafter and I think this beige piece looks so pretty with the beige here. It says wonder, wander, repeat. And I'm just gonna pull this card out. Would you hand me my glue? And I do tend to use glue when it's just paper to paper. It just makes it easier. And I have my Barely Art glue. And this is just what I use. And I'm gonna just make sure I get it down there nice. And maybe I will even take that pink bow and add that. How does that look? Sweet, right? So you can just, again, do whatever it is that you want to do. Typically with bows, I would use things like hot glue, but I don't have my gun out and ready to go, which is fine. And then I just made this little card. This one I decorated the, in, the inside the card, and this one I put the sentiment on top of the plastic. It doesn't make a difference. Like I mentioned, I did the um, poll, and 78% of the people decorate both the inside of the pocket and the outside of the pocket, but I don't. 
And again, if you're doing that, you know, be conscious of who you're sending it to and the purpose of it because you want to make sure if they're using this and they're putting it in their binder, for example, that the three hole punches that are there are available to them. So you might want to just punch those out. But right. yes, absolutely take some pretty tape and you can always add it to the side. Just, I'm just cutting the extra washi tape off right now. That's what I'm doing. And maybe I just want to make a little hole at the top here. I'm just going to use my little crocodile. And I can take any charm I have or any dangle and I can just go ahead and add it. And I don't have a loop on this, so it may not work out perfectly, but if I wanted to add a dangle or a charm, I could. So I could do something like that, so it's just kind of hanging there. And actually, I think I do have a tassel. So I'm just going to take this charm off. And I just added a cute little tassel. So again, I can sit here and decorate this all day to my heart's content. And um, it's just about doing whatever makes me happy and doing what I think looks right for myself and enjoying the process. And that's the most important part, community. Well, I guess that's it, everyone. Thank you so much again for participating. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next Sunday. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.